Well, I'll tell you what's not a hypothetical. The Summer of Tire Rack Sweepstakes. Be sure to enter, and congratulations to Anthony K. from Huntingburg, Indiana, who was our first winner to receive a set of four brand new tires. Now it's your turn to win. Our next winner will be selected this Sunday, and then our third winner will be picked on August 27th. So Anthony from Indiana... And two more winners will have the opportunity to win a set of four tires plus installation, taxes, and fees. Check this out. Valued at up to $1,500 thanks to Tire Rack. Enter daily to continue getting new entries into the contest every day at FoxSportsRadio.com. Again, to enter and get rules, visit FoxSportsRadio.com. Sponsored by TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. I mean, I could have sworn Dan Snyder was gone, Brady. I could have sworn. Everything was fine. You know, now we can just focus on all the positive stuff. It seemed like there were going to be no more issues, no more problems, no more nothing in Washington with the commandos other than the fact that the team name stinks and they probably got to make a change. And then Ron Rivera, the head coach of the Washington commandos, was talking yesterday about how some of the players there have a little bit of an issue with the approach of new offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy. And so here was Rivera speaking with the media, which did not land well with a lot of people who cover sports and a lot of people who may or may not have a preconceived notion as to who Eric Bieniemy is. I had a number of guys come to me and I said, hey, just go talk to him. I said, understand what he's trying to get across to you, you know, and I think as they go and they talk and they listen to him, it's, it's been it's been enlightening for a lot of these guys. I mean, it's a whole different approach. Um, you know, you, you, again, you get a different kind of player from, from the players back in the past, um, especially in light of how things are coming out of college football. So a lot of these young guys, you know, they do struggle with certain certain things. Eric has an approach, and it's the way he does things, and he's not going to change and, and, and because he believes in it. Jack has his approach. You know, um, having been a head coach, I think Jack has a tendency to try and figure guys out a little bit more as opposed to, hey, this is it, this is the way it's going to be, that type of stuff. Where Eric Eric hasn't had that, that experience yet. Just that when they came to you, it was just they felt like Eric was riding them too hard? or Well, um, they just were a little concerned. All right, so that was Ron Rivera talking about it. Okay, the okay. Yeah. So let me start off by asking you this question. Yeah. Should, should we be concerned? Is this a big deal? I don't think so. Then, but... then why is this getting out there? Why is this discussed? Why is this becoming public? It, my, the, my guess would be there are some people that have perceived that as him throwing Eric Bieniemy under the bus, that Bieniemy already has an issue with players there in Washington. That, that's the way I've read it. Which in you, I hear the quote, I see the quote, and I go, okay, well, let me hear the sound. You hear the sound, and it landed differently for me from Ron Rivera. Well, I think it always hits different when you hear someone's tone, right? You, you, see, you hear the way they're actually saying something, which you, you can't get lost in all of this. It does seem like an odd time to have this sort of conversation. I mean, we're... We're just now entering into the, the preseason game portion of, of training camp. What what you used to say was the toughest part of training camp's over. It was not even really a tough part anymore um, for training camp. But if, if you wanted to label a portion of it, that's what we just got, got through. It's just odd that this is becoming a subject. It's, it's even odd that it's being addressed. I'm not sure why it's, it's needed to be addressed. I'm not sure if, he, if, if you know, the, the question prompted the response to it because some players have talked about it or the, the media has witnessed that. You know, Eric Bannemi has had a reputation of being an old-school coach. He was a former player, came from an era where coaches were a lot tougher on you. And so there's some coaches who have continued that approach and some have said, like, I, I can't coach anymore for that reason. And there's others who have adapted to the type of players that they're getting now that don't feed off of that. So it, it's, it's tough to know what exactly the end game is unless, you know, you would be willing to admit 
that Ron Rivera might be on the hot seat. Is it fair to say that? Yeah, hundred percent. And who would take over if Ron Rivera got fired? Uh, probably Eric Bieniemy. Okay. Yeah. And so then you have to wonder to yourself that if you you don't start planting seeds that make people think that maybe Eric Bieniemy wouldn't be best suited for it, and maybe this is one of the reasons why especially with an organization that's had issues in, in their own way from ownership and the workplace, et cetera. But that'd be the other way you'd go about looking at it is that that's coming out almost as a way of Ron Rivera kind of putting up a shield or I, I guess an obstacle for the new brass, new ownership in Washington to move on from him and hire Eric Bieniemy as a head coach since the NFL has clamored for this. I mean, they've clamored in the offseason for Eric Bieniemy to be hired as a head coach for quite some time. It hasn't happened. This would be the other way it could potentially happen. And, and unfortunately, it would be at this, the dismay of, of Ron Rivera, you know, being a head coach there in Washington. If you were Eric Bieniemy, would it bother you that Rivera made those comments? Um, I mean, he's my head coach, so no. I mean, I, I, the reality is, um, I I don't know Eric Bieniemy or his you know coaching style. I'm not sure you know how he would take that. I mean, you have a head coach who's speaking on what he's being asked about, and and it sounds like Ron Rivera is really truthful. I, I don't I don't know that there's anything to you know pick apart or say. Yeah. I mean, like the one thing about the enemy, because he also spoke yesterday just about his approach and his style. The one thing you can say about the enemy when you hear him in this clip is that clearly humble, been through a lot, doesn't think too highly of himself. And if you're doubting the validity of that statement that we just made, we'll take a listen. Yes, I am uh, intense, and I would be afraid, too, to start if I didn't know him. Eric Bieniemy is, is who he is, okay? Eric Bieniemy knows how to adapt and adjust. Eric Bieniemy is a tough, hard-nosed coach, but also understand, I'm going to be the biggest and harshest critic, but I'm also their number one fan because I got their back, and I'm going to support them at all times. Yeah. I mean, right. I, so, so I already know what bothered you in this clip. So just so our listeners understand, <laughs> Jonas does not like when anyone talks in third person. It's, it's very seldom that I think most people <laughs> actually do. But immediately, when we just listened to a clip <laughs> from Eric Bieniemy <laughs> you... talking about Eric Bieniemy, that rubbed you the wrong way. Just a minute. <laughs> just, just a uh... minute. I don't get it, man. I just, I don't get it. It's never landed well with me. I can't imagine ever having a discussion with somebody and saying, uh, you know, Jonas Knox feels this sort of way. And there's only one person who's been able to do it and get away with it. And that is Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson talking about himself in third person is is quite possibly the most quotable, (laughs) amazing person to talk in third person yes he gets a pass yes. he's he's one of those he's guys the who, only person that gets yeah. a pass. it's kind of like when charles barkley can say things on television yeah. that nobody else can say because he's got he's, it's just sort of built in it's grandfathered in he gets a pass ricky henderson do whatever you want to do and talk about yourself as much as possible but it, i i think just big picture the reason why this didn't land wrong with a lot of people is because they're really sensitive to the Eric Bieniemy conversation and the discussion. Because yeah. yeah. nobody wants to just say what a lot of people, and you've talked about this as well, too, on the air for a couple of years, because the conversation about him getting an opportunity has been floated out there for years. He's interviewed, and, nobody, and nobody wants to say, maybe he just didn't interview well. Like nobody wants to say it. There's been a lot of they want to go race card and minority hire. There's been a lot of minority hires in the NFL since Eric Bieniemy had his first head coaching interview. I, I is it does it not have any sort of possibility thrown in there that that maybe he just doesn't interview well and maybe something like that doesn't land well with a lot of people who are looking to hire a head coach who's got his approach that already isn't sitting well with players in Washington so much so that the head coach had to talk about it before we even get to the preseason game. Like to me, I I think that's a real possibility and I think that may be playing out here, but people are sensitive to it and nobody wants to have just a real conversation about it. Well, um, there's a lot of parts of 
the hiring process that need to be improved in the NFL. I mean, bottom line. Yeah. And, and I think the tough thing is there, there, there's probably a percentage of people out there who don't interview well but can do their job well, right? There, those are two different requirements, right? There's a skill set that you have to be able to apply to any career, any job. And you might be good at that. But you know what you might not be good at? Being able to sit in front of someone and tell them how good you are. Now, I, based on that clip, I would think Eric Bieniemy <laughs> could talk very well about Eric Bieniemy in front of a, in front of an owner in an interview. But um, that being said, you know there's elements to the interview process that he might not excel at, where you know don't matter. But it does to the hiring process. But it doesn't matter to the actual job, right? And those are some of the issues that I think every industry you know faces in regards to its hiring process. But there's also this idea that, well, hey, Eric Bieniemy has been their offensive coordinator. And now look at all the success that Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs and all that are having. Okay, well, I, I, I guess we'll see you know, how successful Washington's offense is this year, right, with Eric Bieniemy there if everyone's yeah. assuming that he's an offensive genius because of what happened with the Chiefs. Or, or I guess we'll see what happens with the Chiefs. Like, are they going to take, take a step back without Eric Bieniemy? I mean, I, I would have sat there and, and made the statement that, you know, it doesn't matter that what the Chiefs lost in Matt Nagy and Doug Peterson. They, they still move forward, right? I mean, they like, lost- last time I checked, you want to just tell me, did they win a couple Super Bowls? Yeah, they, they were okay. okay. And also, uh, I, I would have said they probably would have taken a step back after they lost Tyreek Hill and nope. Nope. <laughs> I mean, one of the Super Bowls. Yeah. So, like for the people out there who want to use the accolades, the accomplishments of of Eric Bieniemy during his time with Kansas City, and those you know during that that span, that's great. But yeah, like there's there's two main components to that formula, and it's Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, right? Like those are the main two components, and then everything else is complementary of that. But it's not what makes the Chiefs go, at least not offensively speaking. Um, so I, I, I think. Look, the hiring process could be improved. There's people who are sensitive to that. That's why they get a little bit frustrated with Eric Bieniemy not getting opportunities, even though he's he's been an OC that's you know uh, labeled OC, even though it's still Andy Reid calling the plays, and and other people are, are clamoring for that. Right? He'll get a shot now. He'll get his opportunity. Right? Like that's that's how this is probably going to end up working out. And I think to just bring it full circle, it's probably why you're hearing Ron Rivera make some of these public comments is. He wants to make it very well known, the, the coaching style and, and what Eric Bieniemy could end up being, or if there are any issues with players, like kind of creating a little bit of that awareness for it, for saying like, hey man, if there are issues, then then this is something that like he might have to eventually address, especially if you're getting out in front of it in training camp and the season hasn't even, hasn't even started yet. It hasn't even started yet. It's also, I, I think, it would be pretty a realistic possibility that Eric Bieniemy maybe he's a little bit more frustrated at times because when you go from Patrick Mahomes and everything that they've already built as you pointed out with Andy Reid and then he's tasked with taking over a team that doesn't have Patrick Mahomes and doesn't have all that success yeah maybe he's getting a little bit more frustrated than he normally would and maybe that hasn't shown in practices in Kansas City but it is in Washington because he's not dealing with the kind of talent that he was dealing with and maybe there's an adjustment on his end regardless I mean yeah he's going to get his opportunity and you know it it just depends on how people want to take this and run with it when it comes to Ron Rivera 